North San Diego County Realtors. Um, so we are super excited to be able to host this class uh, for North San Diego County Realtor members today. Today we have Ryan from Reverse Mortgage Educators as our instru instructor to show you how you can earn more listings with the Reverse Mortgage for Purchase. So just a couple of things before we begin. First, if you would like to receive a copy of this PowerPoint, please go ahead and um, uh, send me your emails through the chat box or the Q&A, um, and I will get those to you as soon as possible. Next, we are taking questions throughout the class today. You can put a question in either the chat box or the Q&A at any time. The Q&A button can be found at the bottom of your screens. We will be answering questions at the at 1030 and at 11 o'clock at the end of class. Um, finally, we are recording this class and a copy will be sent to you later today, but please stay until the very end if you can, as we will talk about how you can um, take advantage of our complimentary software and marketing materials to reel in the next listing. All right, Ryan, you can take it from here now. All right, so uh, yes, welcome. And uh, let's uh, jump right in. Of course, uh, like um, Maritza said, Put your questions in the uh, in the question answer, um, but I do answer them usually 30 minutes in because a lot of them do get answered as I move through the material. So what material are we talking about today? Well, of course, we're talking about a reverse mortgage, uh, but I have to tell you that this presentation is a lot more about uh, a realtor's relationship to the reverse mortgage, if that makes sense, in terms of, I think, how you'll uh, come across a reverse mortgage and how you can talk about it and how it may help your business, um, as well as giving a client information about the loan. So, you know, really after working with realtors uh, for the past, uh, well, 12, about 12 years with the reverse purchase loan, um, I've really come up with three things that I thought were important that a real estate agent might want to know in terms of why they should know about a reverse mortgage. And here's my first, you know, realization I came to years ago was, when a client is asking about a reverse mortgage, right? They may not even know how it works. You may not be familiar with how it works exactly, but you still hear the question, what is a reverse mortgage? And we'll learn about exactly what the reverse mortgage is in a minute, but I gotta tell you why they're asking. Most of them are asking, not because they want a reverse mortgage, but because they have a problem. They're usually a homeowner and maybe they've been trying to get a loan. Maybe they've been trying to get cash out of their house. Maybe they've been trying to refinance to lower their payment, but they haven't had any success. And they heard a reverse mortgage is a way to maybe get rid of their mortgage payment or get money out. And so they'll ask that question, but it's not really the reverse mortgage that they want. They want a solution to the problem, which is I'm a homeowner. I need to get rid of a payment, lower payment or get some cash out. Well, now that we know, I, you know why people ask about reverse mortgages, let me tell you something that's really important nowadays. And that's, with interest rates the way they are, many individuals just aren't going to be able to get a reverse mortgage. A lot of them might owe too much on the house that they're trying to get a loan on. Maybe there's something else going on with the home. And so most of the time when someone is asking about a reverse mortgage, you have to know in the back of your mind, first of all, they just have a problem they need someone to solve. Second thing is it's a good chance they're not going to get a reverse mortgage to solve that problem. And what happens to the other 65% that don't get the loan? many of them will need to sell their home. So I convey to you that the question, what is a reverse mortgage could ultimately mean a listing for you. So I want you to have your ears perk up when you hear that phrase or when you hear that question, because it may actually be something for you. Now, one of the ways that a reverse mortgage can also help a realtor is many times clients do need to sell their home and move. However, qualifying for a loan to buy their next home can be difficult. And also the fact that maybe they wanted to own a home and not have a big mortgage payment. Well, we can do a reverse mortgage for purchase loan. First of all, they can get, well, maybe they can't get any other financing. And second of all, after they've bought the home using a reverse mortgage, they don't have to make a payment if they don't want to. We'll talk about that coming up. Here's the third way that I really see a reverse mortgage helping a realtor. You know, as of October of this year, there were 54,000 active reverse mortgages out there. Yeah, there was a lot of them. And you know that those homes are going to have to be sold sooner than later. As a matter of fact, uh, average uh, amount of time reverse mortgage is held is about five to seven years. And many times it's because somebody has passed away. Well, you know, the heirs, they inherit the home when there's a reverse mortgage on it. However, it's not as simple as just calling up the lender and saying, my loved one passed away and I'm taking over the house. 
I'm going to sell the house. I'm going to keep the house and I just need to pay you off. It's not always that simple. As a matter of fact, many heirs, if not, if they haven't set themselves up properly, they may have a really hard time getting that property under control. But I can have you and help you know how they can help get that property under control. And let me tell you, in our experience, most of the heirs that inherit a reverse mortgage home sell it. And they will choose the agent that they think is going to be able to get that job done the best. And if you have already set them up for success to inherit that home, you should be the recipient of that listing. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that later on as well. So these are the top three ways that I've seen a reverse mortgage really be more prominent as a real estate agent's tool to get clients than me, a loan guy. Let's hop into the what is a reverse mortgage? And you know, I've been answering this question uh, about 15 years total I've been in the business. And this is what I've really learned is reverse mortgage is just a regular loan. It's just like a loan you might have on your home now. But let's say that you got a you, you have a mortgage on your house. Let's just say you have a normal mortgage and the statement shows up. And you say, you know, I think I'm not gonna make my payment this month. Well, you know that next month, you'll owe an extra payment because you decided not to make the payment the month before. Now, it doesn't work out that well, right? Because meanwhile, the mortgage company is calling and mailing you saying you missed a mortgage payment. Well, a reverse mortgage is really just a regular loan. You get the statement on it, except when you get the statement, if you decide not to send in the interest that's due for the month, we won't care. We'll just simply take the interest that wasn't paid and add it on to what the client owes. So all you're doing when you get a reverse mortgage is getting a loan where you're saying, I'm going to skip this payment and I know my balance will go up a little bit for next month. But you can continue to do that for the rest of your life. If somebody wanted to get a reverse mortgage and just get their statement every month and say, I'm not going to send the payment in. I want to keep that money in my pocket. Well, then just know your mortgage will go up a little bit for next month by whatever the interest was that you didn't send in the month before. And so that's how we see reverse mortgage balances going up. It's that every single month, a client has decided not to send a payment in and their balance has gone up as a result and it will keep going up. So if you have a reverse mortgage for 30 years and you never make a payment, you can bet your mortgage is gonna be pretty high because you decided not to make 360 payments. But knowing that, some clients do differently. Some will say, you know what, I'll think I'll take six months of sending money in and I'll take six months off. That's a good balance. That way I keep some money in my pocket, but my balance doesn't go up as much as a regular reverse. I just want everyone to know it's the client's choice on how their reverse mortgage runs. It's not the lender, it's not the government. A client decides every month how I want my mortgage to look next month. Maybe I don't want a reverse mortgage this month. No problem. Send in the interest that was due and you don't have a reverse mortgage. Don't send in everything. Well, then you have a reverse mortgage. Now, whoa, what happened to my slide here? Now, can I tell you that one of the reasons why I believe I've had a job for so long is that you can get a reverse mortgage when maybe you can't get any other loan. Yes, that's right. We qualify people to get loans when maybe they shouldn't get any loan at all. A regular lender might say, we're not gonna get you that loan. You don't qualify. And that's a problem in retirement because in retirement, in general, our income is down. And reverse mortgages are underwritten totally different than a regular loan. With that being said, we know now that the reason why many people get reverse mortgage is simply because you can qualify. And maybe the difference between being able to own a home, buy a home, or stay in a home is having a reverse mortgage. Then clients will say, okay, I'll go ahead and do this reverse mortgage thing because it means I can be a homeowner. And it, I have to get this loan because it's the only one I qualify for. But hey, now that you know that you can actually make payments and treat it like a regular loan if you want to, it's actually like an easy to qualify loan in essence. So that's why I think a lot of people do reverse mortgages because we can actually get loans done. Now the reverse mortgage is available as a purchase loan as a refinance loan as well. So we didn't always have the purchase reverse. As a matter of fact, we've only had the purchase reverse mortgage for about 12 years. Yeah, that's it. Is that right? 1990. Boy, time is flying. It's actually a lot more than that. Anyways, the reverse mortgage came out in uh, about 2000. So we've had the reverse mortgage for about 12 years. And 
let me tell you, not reverse mortgage, reverse mortgage for purchase for 12 years. The regular reverse mortgage has been around for a long time, 30, 40 years. So it's really just recently that we've been able to help people use a reverse mortgage to buy a home, which is important for realtors because many people who do need to sell and move can't qualify for a regular loan, yet a purchase loan with the reverse they can qualify for. So it's helpful in that way. Now, here's something that I've learned really just by doing it for so many years, not because I'm a rocket scientist and figured all this stuff out. So many times a realtor has called and said, Ryan, I have a client who wants to do reverse mortgage and they don't want to sell their home. I'd say, okay, well, let's go meet them and see if I could do reverse for them. Fully intending on seeing if I could do a refinance reverse mortgage because the client wants to stay in their home. And more times than not nowadays, because we're lending less money, I let the client know either one, I can't get you a loan big enough to pay off your current mortgage. Therefore, a reverse mortgage doesn't work. Or maybe I can't get you a loan amount big enough to pay off your current loan and to get you the cash you wanted. So ultimately, even though a client has dug their feet in and said, I'm never selling, I'm going to stay here after they start working through the options and they're tight on cash, I've been surprised at how many individuals end up saying, gosh, I didn't want to do this. I wasn't expecting to do this, but yeah, I got to sell my home. But it's only after we truly work through all the options so that they could see there's not a lot out there, but that takes time. And by the way, sometimes you can see the signs. Sometimes you see a house that's not in great shape, paint's been peeling for a while, you see things going on that we know a client probably doesn't have a lot of cash flow. So when a house looks like it needs repairs or there's things going on in their lives and yet they're saying, I'm not going to sell, we really have to know that there's a potential that they might be the ones that are going to sell, even though they said, I don't want to, because of cash flow issues. So finally, since the client might ask you, how does a reverse mortgage work, right? Which I just want you to remember this. How does a reverse mortgage work again? I want you to think about it. Oh, it's just like a regular loan. It really is. Except if you don't send in the payment that it shows on the statement is due, they just simply add that to what you owe and you have a little bigger balance next month. I just want you to remember that. That's how a reverse mortgage works. And we know they can do that for the rest of their lives and their balance will just keep going up. But outside of that, it's pretty much like a regular loan. And when a client refinances the house with a regular loan, they get cash out. Well, you can get cash out with a reverse mortgage. You can get an equity line set up or you can get cash out lump sum. So I just want you to have that little bit of in extra information because the client might say, oh, that's how reverse mortgage works. I just can skip a payment and they add it to what I owe. Oh, okay, that's pretty easy. But can I get cash out too? Like a regular cash out refinance? And now you can say, yeah. Uh, you can get equity lines and lump sums. I want you to know this because I don't want the client to go looking for answers from somewhere else and get them. And then maybe you lose them as a client. I want you to have enough information to at least hold their interest. And then you can get them over to me if you want. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you a quick story that just happened yesterday. I was talking to an agent <clears throat> and the client was asking about a reverse mortgage. And this agent didn't have enough information or didn't get the client what they we're looking for in terms of information. And what happened is this client went and asked another professional, another reverse person about that, not me. <clears throat> and that reverse person answered the questions and got them a different realtor. So when I was talking to my friend, the realtor yesterday, he was so sad because this listing was in Orange County, Anaheim. He lives in Anaheim, Orange County. This a uh, real estate agent was like 150 miles away, but it was because that agent had some information about the reverse that this realtor, a buddy of mine, didn't give them because they didn't really think it was worth the time. Well, he's very sad now, I got to tell you, but he's learned the lesson that hopefully get them just enough information to keep them in your wheelhouse. And then if you need more, of course, get them over to a professional like me and I can finish answering their questions, but at least you didn't let them out of your sights. Because you know that question about a reverse mortgage can oftentimes turn into a listing. All right, almost ready to answer questions. Let's see, it's 1017. Actually, I got 13 minutes before I answer questions. So let's get through this slide. 
Here we go. How does a reverse purchase work? Remember we said a lot of clients aren't gonna stay in that home for whatever reason, but yet maybe buying that next home with a regular loan is not gonna work out. The payment might be too high. Maybe they don't qualify. Let's take this client here. Let's say they had a house that was worth 950 and they are 72 years old, right? Well, why do I, oh, I'm sorry, 74 years old. What? Why do I have an age up there at all? 72, 74, why do I care how old they are? Well, we lend money based on how old the client is. Yes, I guess you could say we discriminate. I don't know, that's legal. I guess it's a government loan. But we actually lend money, more money to an older person. So that's nice. The older you are, the bigger loan amount you get. So that's why we always need to know how old somebody is when it comes to reverse mortgage. That's how we determine how much money to lend them. In this case, we have a 74-year-old borrower and they have decided they need to sell their home. You sell their home for $950,000. They put $490,000 in their pocket. In other words, maybe they had a loan to pay off. They had the cost of selling the house. So they pay those costs and pay that loan off when the home sold. And now they have four ninety dollars left in their pocket. And they say to you, I have four ninety dollars now. I need to buy a replacement home. I need to put some money in the bank and I'm not so hot on either qualifying for a mortgage or ending up with a big mortgage payment. And of course, then they tell you, I found a home for 650 I like. Whoa, you just told me you need to keep money in the bank. You're worried about getting a mortgage. You only have 490,000 and you want a 650 house. Ah, right. Well, that's clients for you. That's humans for you. That's me. I always want more than I think would I should get. <laughs> but in this case, we want to help them because they're your client, right? So. We look at the reverse purchase for this client. Based on that age of 74, I tell them to buy a 650 house, you need to put down 387. I'll give you the reverse mortgage for 263. So there you have your 650 price, right? And now a client has bought a home. They only put down 387 and they had 490 from the sale there of the property, which means they got to keep 103 thousand dollars in the bank and remember they bought the house with the reverse so if they don't want to make a monthly mortgage payment they don't have to they can skip payments to make their budgets work we took them from a house where they had a high mortgage payment maybe not very much cash in the bank to a house where their mortgage payment is now optional and put a hundred thousand in their bank life changer believe it or not it really is by the way, this client may not have qualified for a regular loan. This client may only be getting 1700 bucks a month in social security. And yet we got them a loan to buy a home and they may even had credit blemishes, who knows? This is the case where reverse purchase will help get that transaction done. So this can be helpful to you all. Now, a couple things. Just because I say we can get people a loan and they can't get anything else, that doesn't mean it's easy. That doesn't mean it happens right away. And we do disqualify people, okay? So before you'd ever sell somebody's home, we wanna make sure we pre-underwrite the file. When we pre-underwrite a file, we manually underwrite. And so we don't have automated engines. We don't have DU or DO or any of these things you may have been familiar with. We manually underwrite and we give a handwritten approval because, uh, don't be wrong, it's typed, but it's not machine generated because we have to manually underwrite. And that could take a while. Sometimes it could take us two weeks to get a loan underwritten. So you would definitely want to do that and get them approved before you ever sold their home, right? And that way we can have a normalized 30 or 35 day escrow. Now, the government wants to make sure people understand how reverse mortgages work before they take one out. So they have nonprofit counseling companies that have been approved to talk to people about reverse mortgages. I give a client a list. They hop on the phone. They can spend 30 or 40 minutes with that person on the phone. And they get a counseling certificate that just says, I have met the minimum standards for what the government wants me to know to get a reverse mortgage. And now we can actually proceed with the loan. So this should be done probably the same time as pre-underwriting. By the way, you can't give credits to cover things like closing costs. Uh, seller couldn't give a credit because there's termite damage. It's a FH, these are FHA style loans. Uh, a seller couldn't say, you know what, instead of, um, I'll, Instead of uh, me taking the couch, we'll work out, you, I'll leave the couch behind and we'll change the price. Like these kind of things get a little sticky. They really just want a normal transaction where sellers paying their half, buyers paying their half and no concessions or 
credits. But by all means, we do have a phone number that is especially for real estate agents. And why? Well, because you might be out on a Sunday and you hear somebody talking about a reverse mortgage. And you want to hop in that conversation because you're thinking that might be a listing. And then you get thrown a curveball question and you're like, I really want to answer that for them, but I don't know that. Well, hey, excuse yourself from the conversation for a minute. Go in the bathroom, call me up, go Ryan. This person just asked how the heir can inherit the home if they pass away. And I'll give you that information. You go back out there and you're a superstar, right? The idea is that this number is here for you all to be able to use, actively use the reverse mortgage to help your business. And when you get questions asked, I want you to be able to answer them right away. We usually staff this number seven days a week. All right, so this is the point in time when I would usually take a little break and answer questions. However, apparently, is my microphone on? I have not generated any questions or you all have tuned out already. Maybe go grab a cup of coffee. I got another 30 minutes I'm going to be here. So I was kind of hoping maybe you guys had some questions. We'll, we'll grab them next time around. Let me make sure I'm still on this thing. Make sure my mic's working, all that good stuff. All right. Let's hop into the next part. <clears throat> oh, yes. Thank you for my question. Uh, this is Cecilia. Can you show the phone number again? Absolutely. Uh, there you go. I'll leave that phone number up. I got two more questions. Thank you, guys. You make me feel like I'm I'm doing something here. Okay, what's the minimum loan amount? John, that's a great question. Usually I always get, what's the maximum loan amount? There really is no minimum loan amount. And let me explain why that is real quick. You can get a reverse mortgage and have all the proceeds that you're approved for set up as a line of credit. Why is that great? Because the line of credit you get on a reverse mortgage is guaranteed. It can never be frozen. So unlike a regular home equity loan that can freeze, if property values are dropping or whatever's going on, you have a guaranteed line of credit. So you cannot borrow literally any money and you're not charged for it until you start pulling money off that line of credit. So you can have an equity line and not use it right away. And by the way, here's something else that's cool on a reverse mortgage line of credit. It, let's say that I started out and I gave someone a $300 line of credit, $300, $300,000 line of credit, and they never used any money off it, say for five years. Do you know that 300,000, we give it a growth rate? Yeah, we literally make the line of credit bigger every month so the client has more money that they can get access to. And we make that line of credit bigger even if housing property values are going down. It's a pretty significant thing that the government FHA allows us to do and that we're telling people, we're guaranteeing you can get this money out. We'll make more available on whatever you don't use and you don't get charged until you use it. So John, I hope that answered your question. It was certainly long-winded answer. Okay, PDF and presentation are very thorough. Oh, I like you. I like it. Thank you, Tara. All right, now we'll keep moving forward. Here we go. So I gotta tell you, when I got into this business a long time ago, I was wondering, who would want a reverse mortgage? I'm just like everybody else. I hear everything out there. And the reason I got into the reverse mortgage industry, I was already a regular loan officer years ago, 15 years ago. And my uncle said, Ryan, I want to do reverse mortgage. Can you do one for me? I said, I don't know anything about them. He's like, I thought you were a loan person. I was like, I am. But I don't have to take training on reverse mortgages. I don't know what they are. Why do you want one? And of course, this is how the story played out for my uncle. First of all, he was one of the um, older boomers, okay? He was one of the oldest of boomers. And <clears throat> although very successful, uh, uh, he didn't put enough money away for retirement. And so he said, Ryan, I don't want to sell my house. However, I didn't put enough money away and now I'm struggling. And I said, okay, well, geez, uncle, uh, uncle Ron, um, tell me about your income. And he pretty much was the story on here. He was getting social security, <clears throat> which when I did this, excuse me, <clears throat> when I did this for him, he was probably getting $1,400 a month of social security, okay? He was a very successful guy, by the way, very well-known psych, uh, psychiatrist in Westlake Village. And he didn't have enough money put away. So he said, Ryan, I wanna do this. And I said, okay. 
and he's going through his savings and he was concerned. So we looked at the reverse mortgage for him. And I got to tell you, his was one of the first that I said, you know, Uncle Ron, you owe really too much on this house to do reverse. I mean, I might be able to squeak out a reverse for you on this barely, but then you're really not going to have any extra cash and you have a lot of equity in this home. So he sold the home and we did a reverse purchase for him. But it all came down to this. It's not that he didn't love his home. Great home. I grew up going there. I love the house. I'm very sad when he sold it. But he just didn't save enough for retirement. He was like much of the rest of the United States. Just didn't have enough money put away. So even though he never thought he was going to do reverse, I never thought I was going to be the one doing it for him. We did a reverse. But more importantly, we actually did a reverse purchase. So an agent sold that home and then found him a new home. And then did a reverse purchase for him to buy the next home. Just like that last example. It worked out very well. Now, could I got him a reverse to stay in his home? I probably could have. But, you know, it just wasn't enough cash available afterwards, we thought, to maintain the home and, and do what he needed to do. It was going to really give him not any money, just be able to pay off his current loan. So we thought it was a better positioning for him to get him in a, a lower-priced home and put some cash in the bank. So this was a living example. And, and that's one of the first purchase transactions I had done. And, uh, well, obviously, it worked well. That was many years ago. It was like 12 years ago, and it worked well. Okay, why, but why did he get in that position? I, I have to say, he's a very smart guy. And I think, I don't know, I think generally most humans are pretty smart people. We work hard, you know, but some things change in the 70s, actually. I think that really put the boomers behind the eight ball more than any of our other generations. And that was, pension funds really went away. In 70s and 80s, corporations really turned into more like we need to produce revenue for our shareholders and shareholder value more than pensions for our employees. And as a matter of fact, like I, I always use this example because I think it's crazy. Like if you work for Sears and Roebuck in the 70s, you had a pension plan, just selling lawnmowers. I mean, that's awesome. I love lawnmowers. If I got a good pension plan, ah, selling lawnmowers, you might not see me here today. I'd be the best darn lawnmower salesman ever because I got a pension plan, right? Life's great. But all these corporations figured out they were too expensive and they got rid of them. And our boomer generation was really one of the first generations to realize that was happening to them. But to try to get caught up and start saving as much as it took to fund a 401k, it didn't go well. As a matter of fact, it's still not going well for our current generations. Without those pension plans and the benefits that the companies used to give out, we just have a hard time saving enough money in retirement. And so this is one of the reasons why we're underfunded in retirement. And this is why we see reverse mortgages and homes being sold by older homeowners. Uh, do you know that the National Association of Realtors, they do a study once a year. It's called a study of home buyers and home sellers, right? And you know more than half the people selling their homes right now are 55 and older? Yeah, more than half the homes being sold are by older generation. Not because necessarily they want to, because they figured out, I really need to sell this home to help fund my retirement. So those people that say, I don't want to sell my home, sell their homes. Many times it's because of cash flow issues. If you were to talk to the National Council on Aging, I think their study shows that maybe about 70% of the people don't want to sell. Yeah, we see the National Association of Realtors saying over 55% of them sell. So it sounds like there's 15 or 20% in there that never thought they were going to have to sell to do sell. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we have this thing called house, rich, cash, poor. Uh, it really just means we have a lot of equity in our homes. And so what we see is a lot of our retired homeowners that are saying, I need to get some cash out of this house. Maybe that means selling it. Maybe that means doing a reverse mortgage. But I just want you all to know that there is a call to action for our older homeowners that they have to sell their homes. Otherwise, they may have to live too tightly. And that's not a great way to live. We know when you don't live properly health suffers hey your house starts to suffer all kinds of things so uh, like i said I, I generally believe that i don't know the human population is pretty smart and and they know these decisions have to be made and they're making them even if they don't want to sell they're selling their homes by the way we have eight trillion in our uh 65 and older uh, homeowners in equity yeah now of course we may see a little pullback on that but it's still a lot even if whatever kind of pullback we might have over the next year, who knows it's going to happen. I still know we have plenty of equity in these homes to help fund retirements and maybe to sell the homes. 
what happens in the future with the reverse mortgage, right? This is the one bullet point I put on that earlier slide where you can actually maybe realize a few listings from reverse mortgage. Well, let's talk about this. When someone passes away with the reverse mortgage, the heirs absolutely have the right to inherit the home. So how does that happen? And how can you help them? Well, let's just talk about the basics here. First of all, when a house has a reverse mortgage and a homeowner's passed away, if the house is worth more than what's owed, well, heirs, put the house on the market or pay it off. If you want to keep the home, just go get a refinance loan and pay off whatever's owed to the reverse mortgage lender. That's it. The reverse mortgage lender, the government, nobody cares about what the house is worth. They just want to get back how much they've lent plus the interest, right? That's it. Very simple. Same thing. Maybe the heirs say, hey, we don't want to have to refinance. We don't want to keep this house. We're going to sell it and we capture the equity and we sell it. And this is what I see happen more times than not is the heirs sell the property, right? Other ones, one, one's got to buy the other one out and maybe they both have homes. And generally I see more heirs getting together, although not amicably all the time, but selling the home. Now, what if the house is underwater, right? What if we've had a, a long contraction in the economy and housing prices are going down? And this happened in 2000, right? Seven, eight, that time. And we used to lend a lot more money on reverse mortgages, by the way. So then we actually had upside down homes with reverse mortgages back in the day. Let's say that you had houses worth 700 and the clients owed 750 and they pass away and the heirs are thinking, what are we going to do? We wanted that house, but there's no way we're going to spend or pay back the lender 750 when the house only worth 700. That doesn't make any sense. Well, in the case of a government insured reverse mortgage, by the way, we call these a HECM, Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. Okay, that's what the government calls their FHA insured reverse. And what you'll find is that in the case that it's a government insured reverse mortgage, which by the way, is probably most of the loans out there right now. The government says, we don't expect you to give us more money than what the house is worth. We've had FHA insurance on this. It's been being added on to the balance. So what we'll do for you, Air, is we will take whatever the house is worth. In, case, in this case, it's worth 700. We will knock 5% off of that. That equals 665. We're going to give you the house if you just find a way, or we're going to not give it to you. It's your house, but we're going to come off the title as a lender. If you just figure out how to get a 665, and the difference between the 665 and what the balance was, which is about 85,000, we'll pay that to the lender. FHA will pay the shortage. So as an error, as long as it's a government insured reverse mortgage called a HECM, you should never have to worry about inheriting an upside down home because FHA will wipe out that upside down portion and return to you a house with equity. But you do got to refinance it, right? To get that and, and get a new loan. Well, maybe the heirs say, we don't want to bother with that. As a matter of fact, I don't care what happens to the house. I'm going to go get all the stuff out of it and sign our house. Well, if you do that, this is what the reverse mortgage industry has to do. First of all, we have to send out a letter saying, hey, we understand the last borrower's passed away. Give us you have 30 days to let us know you want to do something. If nobody responds to the servicer, then the servicer has to go into foreclosure. They'll send out a notice of default. The default will say, hey, you got 90 days here to get a hold of us and do something. We don't know what's going on. We haven't heard from anybody. And of course, if nobody gets a hold of them, then they'll issue a notice of sale, an NTS. And that means 30 days or 20 days later or so, they'll try to send it to auction and have the investors bid on it. So at the end of the day, this is a lot like a regular loan. If the heirs don't even show up and want the house, the lender or the government can't arbitrarily take the house. They simply got to put it through foreclosure, investors bid on it. But the heirs don't have to worry because it's a non-recourse loan. So nothing will ever come back to them saying, hey, this house was damaged or it came back and your parents owed way more than what it was worth. We're going to get a deficiency judgment. None of that stuff happens. They simply walk away. Of course, a better alternative to that would just be to short sell the house, right? Let's just get this thing short sell. Hey, I have an agent I like, you. And you short sell it like you would a, tr a traditional short sell on an FHA home. So that's what happens in the future with the reverse mortgage. But let's talk about, let's get down to the brass tacks where the rubber meets the road, you would say. And that when the borrowers have passed away, the heirs really need to make sure that they've had things set up properly to get that house easily, to get the house and be able to do what they want with it. Let me give you a few examples here. And the reason why I tell you this is that whenever you run across a reverse mortgage, you should ask the owners, 
hey, I hope you like your reverse mortgage, this and that, that, you know, I've, I've seen them around. And, and I got to tell you, I, I just want to make sure you've already set up all the proper things you need to do to make sure your heirs can get the house easily, right? Because I know there's a certain order of things that need to be done. Most borrowers will be like, I think so. I don't know. I didn't know that something had to be done. I thought they just got it or I already have a trust set up. No problem. All of those responses mean I need your help. And let me tell you why that is. First of all, let's say that they say, oh, don't worry, Mr. And Mrs. Realtor. Thanks for your concern. We put our house in a trust. Ah, okay, very good job. So you won't go into probate. But let me ask you this question. Did you put that house in the trust after you got your reverse mortgage? Because if you did, the servicer may not recognize that trust because you're supposed to put it in the trust before the loan funds. That's right. When you put the trust in the the house and a trust after the loan funds, you've actually violated the terms of the note and saying that you will not convey title. So the heir may call up the servicer and go, oh, you know, my parents have passed away and this and that. And I'm, I'm just want to let you know, I'm, I'm going to do this and get the house in the market and do stuff. And they're going to say, well, who are you? Well, I'm, you know, I'm Cody. I'm their son. Uh, well, Mr. Son, Cody, we don't see that you're a trustee. We don't see there's any trust when the house was funded. We don't see that you have permission to speak to us. There's no authorization on the form. So we're hanging up the phone on you and we're going to start foreclosing. What? Yeah, because the house was not put in the trust properly. So you can just simply ask them, did you put the house in the trust before or after the loan? If you did after the loan, you might have some issues. Just want to let you know. Uh, I can get you over to Ryan. He can explain to you why. But you've identified a problem that could really help them in the future because those servicers will not talk to the kids even if the trust was done. The servicer has to know about the trust. They have to have reviewed the trust. They have to know that who they're talking to has the legal authority to handle it. Here's another thing, just a simple phone call. Does a reverse mortgage company have whoever you want to handle your business on file when something happens to you and have your written authorization? I don't know. Well, let's call them up. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Servicer. This is uh, so-and-so here. I got them here bar with you. Do you have their uh, daughter, Juliet? Do you have authorization to speak to her in case something happens to our borrower? No. Oh, well, can we send you that in? So that way, when something happens to me, you'll speak to you. Sure. Man, these things are so important because now when something happens to mom and she's frustrated and she doesn't know what to do and she calls a servicer and the servicer says, oh, we do have you on file, ma'am. Here's what you need to do to get going. That's so much better than, ma'am, we don't know who you are. Click. And she's got to figure out why. I get these calls all the time, by the way. So what I'm trying to let you know is there are definite things that you could do when you see a reverse mortgage in place to help the heirs and the borrowers. And you need to let them know that you're the one that's getting to help them out. And that way, when something happens, you be the real estate agent that gets the business. And I can help you do that. So important. And you can just line yourself up with some listings in the future. And that phone will ring. Let's find out. If I've done an okay job today so far, uh, does the governor bank own the home, right? Do they ever take possession of that reverse mortgage house, right? And the answer, of course, is no. It's Remember, it's more like a regular loan than anything. So all you're simply doing is borrowing money and they're putting a loan on the title, right? A mortgage, if you will. And so the government bank doesn't want the home. They just want to get paid back whatever they're owed. They can't just come in and take the home arbitrarily. So no. It's your house just like a regular loan. Well, the heirs lose future appreciation. Well, the heirs can get whatever equity is in the home when the borrowers have passed away, but they better have it set up properly so they can get it easily. By the way, the heirs can get up to a year to get this home sold or get it under control, but only if they've done the steps properly. So make sure you're the one that says, look, Let's make sure you have a full year to do it. If you don't do it properly, they can start foreclosure in 30 days. Okay. Can the heirs inherit the home after they pass away? We just went through that. Absolutely. I want you to be the one to help them inherit it because usually I see them sell it. I want you to be the one to sell it. The house ends up underwater. I can't live there anymore. Well, this goes back to the very first bullet point. Absolutely not. The, the idea of this reverse mortgage is someone gets to stay there the rest of their lives. Okay. And it doesn't matter how much they owe. It doesn't matter if they decided not to make a payment every single month. That's their option. The loan is for the lifetime of the borrower. Okay. How do you mess that up? You can mess that up. How? Well, let's say you get a reverse mortgage and you move out. That's not a good plan. Let's say you rent the house out. That's not a good plan. It's got to be owner occupied. 
means you need to have at least one room in the house yours. You can rent out a couple of rooms, but it's got to be your primary residence. Hey, what if I'm in the hospital and I'm gone? You can be gone for up to a year with the reverse mortgage, but you got to get back before that year is up. Otherwise, you'll get something that says, sorry, you've been gone for a year. But if you get back within that year and you've established that you're there, well, then you get another year. So you just got to make it back within that year. How do they know that you're gone? Well, they send out an uh, occupancy cert once a year and you fill it out. And in general, they will say, okay, they're living there. If you don't send that in, then they think you're gone. But maybe they see a change of address. Maybe there's some other way they found out that you're gone. The point is that you can, do, you can get a year, okay? And then get back somehow within that year so you can reestablish residency and get another year. Hey, if you don't pay your tax insurance, you're gonna get foreclosed on because you gotta pay your property taxes. You gotta keep the house insured. So we act pretty quickly when we see these things aren't being done, we'll issue an NOD. So you gotta get those taxes paid and homeowners paid and HOA paid. Otherwise you can get foreclosed on. That used to happen a lot more, like years ago, like eight years ago or so. We never even asked people if they made enough money to pay their taxes, if they had enough social security. We would just give them a reverse mortgage and assume that they were gonna take care of everything because they didn't have a mortgage payment. Bad thought. We were giving loans to people who didn't even have enough money coming in to make a tax payment. And so what happens? Well, you eat first, you keep the lights on, and then if you have enough money, you pay your taxes. And so we ended up with quite a few homes in foreclosure because they didn't pay their property taxes. That's why we do some underwriting now to make sure that not, you know, we're setting people up for success and not failure. Our foreclosure rates have come down quite a bit because of that simple rule right there in terms of underwriting. All right, and then finally, you can't let the home get to the point where it's a health and safety issue, right? When we do the reverse mortgage, an appraiser goes out there, he says, you meet FHA guidelines. So keep it in basic the shape you got it in when you got the reverse mortgage and you'll meet FHA standards. And what happens? I don't know, maybe somebody gets a broken window and we don't drive by and look right now, but maybe somebody knows you have a reverse mortgage or I don't know. I I've been doing this for almost 15 years. I haven't had any of my clients call and say that they've been called because their house doesn't meet standards. So it had to be, it's probably something pretty blatant. Somehow their servicer found out, maybe they have a database that looks for violations on properties, uh, citations, I don't know. Maybe a nosy neighbor knows who your servicer is and they send in a letter. But th this rule I'd say is probably the, the least significant in terms of concern for me with people that have reverse mortgages and, and getting in trouble with it. Okay, let's see how I'm doing on time. I got 15 minutes. I'm a little behind schedule, but I'll grab your question, Cecilia. Uh, reverse mortgage rates for the FHA insured reverse mortgage, very comparable to your normal loans. Uh, we are at five to 6% rates on fixed and adjustables. Uh, why do people do an adjustable rate reverse mortgage? Well, one, because you never get foreclosed on. So, uh, you know, by not making a payment, so they worry less about an adjustable rate. And adjustable rate loans are the ones that have the equity line feature. So that's why we see probably the um, more so more reverse mortgages that are done are the uh, adjustable kind. But anyways, if you want to get a fixed, you could. You don't get an equity line with that. So some people don't like that. There are non-government reverse mortgages. I'll talk about those in a second. Primarily though, those rates are FHA reverses. So they're the same as your normal loans. There's a half a percent mortgage insurance that's added annually. So that makes it, it's an FHA loan. So you have your annual mortgage insurance, okay? So add a half a percent on, let's say that you're getting a six point uh, two five fixed rate reverse mortgage to actually six point seven five because you have the mortgage insurance. All right, let's see here. Uh, moving on. So I said we qualify based on age. So is every age like is it very easy? Like every seventy year old you get the same percentage? Well, there are some things. As interest rates change, the percentages change. So I don't just send out a table or have you memorize anything. Now, who would want to memorize that anyways? I did make an app you can download on your phone. And that phone app will ask you for the client's age and the value of the home, and it'll tell you what their loan amount will be. So now you have a way to calculate an FHA insured reverse mortgage just on your phone. And we update those apps. That way we keep the numbers you know, correct for you. Uh, we do use the lower of the two, by the way. Uh, here we go, FHA reverse mortgage. What if you have somebody under 62? Because we used to say you had to be 62 to get a government insured reverse mortgage. Now, if you're married and your spouse is younger, that's fine. We'll still protect the younger spouse, but we'll use the younger age, which means when you use a younger age to qualify, you get lower money. 
FHA reverse mortgages, if you want to get a reverse mortgage with your friend, no problem. You both have to be over 62 because you're not married to each other. For FHA reverse, I got to change this. Currently, the maximum value we'll use on the loan is $1,089,700. That just changed. And I'm pretty sure I'm right on that number. That What that simply means is that if the house is worth more than $1,089,000, you can still use a government-insured reverse mortgage. However, we won't be giving you a bigger loan amount. You will simply get the same loan amount and whether your house is worth 10 million or 1,089,000. So the government insured reverse mortgage is really designed for houses that are worth less than say 1.1 million. Uh, well over 1.1 million, you can use non-government reverse mortgages. Now I, this slide needs to be adjusted because our market's changing so much these days. But basically if a house is worth probably 2 million or more, we'll use a non-government insured reverse mortgage because they may give us a, low, a higher loan amount. Uh, what's the drawback to that? Um, the rates are higher. You're gonna see eight, 9% rates on non-government insured reverse mortgages. So the rates are a little higher. There is no mortgage insurance. So it's a little cheaper without mortgage insurance, but the interest rate is higher. So it kind of ends up, you know, that it's just more expensive loan, uh, the jumbos, the bigger loan. So somebody really have to want to get their reverse mortgage on a $2 million home to uh, make it worthwhile, but some people do. So that's how we basically work our numbers in terms of how much we lend on a reverse mortgage. All right. I'm checking my time. I'm doing okay. Just some stuff off of my desk, by the way. When I see home sell and it's older homeowners that, that, that I've been keeping score on these days, especially come across my desk. Uh, one thing I see is that of course, since I tell agents get find people's reverse mortgages because those heirs are gonna sell those homes, right? So I know nowadays heirs are selling these homes that have reverse mortgages on there. So if you're having a hard time finding some listings, make sure you keep track of who has reverse mortgages. Uh, I see older homeowners selling their homes, moving closer to be their, uh, closer to their support network. I see older homeowners definitely saying, I need to sell because I just am not making as much money as I used to and things are getting tough. And maybe they don't wanna do reverse mortgage. So, or they don't qualify or I'm done with them. And I said, look, this is all you're gonna get. And they're like, geez, I really need more than that. Sell your house. Of course, downsizing and people who don't qualify for reverse, which is quite a few dead. It's, it's the loan amount folks nowadays, because the interest rates are up, our loan amounts are smaller. And that is really uh, creating a little bit more difficulty in getting these loans done for people that have high mortgage balances. It's not that they don't have equity. It's that I just can't give them a loan big enough to pay off their current. So they sell their home. Remember the reverse purchase slide I did? That's why we're doing reverse purchases. So that way they can sell, they can still own a home and we do reverse purchase. And you get two transactions out of it. That doesn't sound too terrible to me. All right. By the way, experimenting. That sounds almost funky. Maybe I shouldn't have it like that on there. What I simply mean is this. You know, there are ways that uh, we, I, I have a bunch of videos that we've done where we basically let you know how you can use databases to find older homeowners that might need to sell. For example, I've done a video where I looked up and I'll give you logins for the software, by the way, that I looked this stuff up on and you can watch the videos and see what I do. I went on this Title Pro 24-7. I'll give you logins for it. I said, I want to know who's older in my neighborhood that has a big mortgage payment and maybe their income is, is not high, right? This, a lot of this data is out there, believe it or not, and you can access it. And then I put the kicker in there and who has a tax default? That's somebody older who might need to sell their home. And if you watch the video, see what happened. I went and knocked on three doors. Got pretty close to someone who might need to list their home. So I experimented, if you will, and you can watch those. You could do the same thing I did. We'll give you the same tools. Um, maybe they're in your neighborhood. They're right in your neighborhood and they're gonna need to sell. Uh, by the way, if you don't wanna have to talk to anybody, I've written some newsletters for you. And here these newsletters are, you can download them, they're free. And you can put your name on them. And they have information in there like, what happened to Prop 19? Can I transfer tax base? Uh, what happens if someone's offering me all cash? I just heard a commercial, I hear them all the time. I'm sure you do too. Don't worry about real estate agents. We'll give you pay it cash in 10 days. Don't fix your house up. No commissions. Like, is that really the best way for an older homeowner to sell their house? Might they get more money if you help them out and listed it? So I have an article about that. Who knows? Uh, so anyways, these are things that I found that older homeowners that were looking to sell their homes 
we're interested in. Uh, I do this course. I do it quickly. I used to do it three hours. Now I do it for like 50 minutes and I expect you to have all this, you know, memorized, not even close. So I break this apart into six videos. If you want to rewatch it, I actually have more information in those videos than I did here. And they're about eight or nine minutes long each. And that way you can get a refresher if you want to pick out which video you see that you want to get a refresher on and watch it. And it's all available to you. We'll give you, we'll give you logins for the site. And that way you can um, keep track or go for a refresher if you're going to meet a client or somebody asks you about a reverse and you want to learn real quick for yourself. Watch the video. No problem. So we'll give you logins for that. All right. I'm going to uh, let's see. I'll grab questions and then we'll uh, I'll let Maritza wrap it up with how you get the uh, logins to get the newsletters or to uh, find the videos where we do some fun things with that database. Uh, John loves the app. Oh, John. You're my guy today. Thank you, John. Um, can you send us a link for the newsletters? So Cecilia, what will happen is we'll send you logins and you can get the newsletters. Go to the website whenever you want. That way you won't lose them. Just keep the logins and they'll be there. Besides that, you know, sometimes we do need to update these newsletters. Like when Prop 6090 changed to Prop 19, we had to update the newsletter. So we don't want to have you distributing old newsletters with wrong information. All right, Brad. Can a homeowner get a reverse mortgage without paying off the COVID missed payment balance that was tacked onto the back of their loan. I have a friend who took advantage of skipping mortgage payments during COVID. When she tried to refinance her home, the lender said she would have to pay off the lump sum before she could get the refinance loan. And that lender was correct. Unfortunately, Brad, we have to clear everything off title. So whatever loan is on there, maybe there's a silent second on there. Cause remember that was big back in the day. Uh, if there's any forbearance on there, uh, if there's a hero loan on there, we gotta, uh, we gotta pay it off. Um, if there's solar panels on there, we can so we can uh, usually leave those on there if it's a lease. But otherwise, Brad, it sounds like that lender uh, probably knew what they're doing. Now, here's the question, though. Can we find a way to get her the biggest payout possible so she can pay off that forbearance? That's where maybe uh, I could do some work if you wanted to and figure out how we can try to make the loan work and maybe get her as much cash as possible to pay that off. Maybe the problem was she wasn't getting a loan big enough to pay it off. Uh, I don't know, feel free to contact me, Brad, and I'm happy to help you further on that. Thanks for the question. All right, or if you have uh, additional questions, pop it in there. All right, Tara back. All right, chat is disabled. Can you please include me, Maritza? Okay, Maritza, that message is for you. I don't know how to enable a chat. All right. All right, let's see, how'd we do? Okay, number one, I just want you all to know really one thing, really, after this presentation, I don't want you to think of reverse mortgage as a loan anymore. Please don't think of it as a loan that some loan guy does. What it truly is, is a client saying and raising their hand, saying, I'm looking for some help with the situation I have with my house. I don't know, I don't wanna sell it, but I'm trying to get some money or I'm trying to, get some money out of it, get rid of my mortgage payment. They're raising their hand saying, I have an issue. And now I want you to know so many times I can't solve that issue for them. It's you that might need to solve that issue. So now when you hear someone saying reverse mortgage, think, hey, that's a possible listing for me. Of course, I want to help a client out. I'll send them to Ryan and whatever. But I know in the back of my mind, I definitely need to keep track of them. And I need to be prepared to help them figure out what they might be able to do should the reverse not work out since I know so many people will not get them. Here's my emails. Chris, let's see, uh, Maritza is gonna come on and tell you how to make sure you get the logins. You can email me anytime. I'm not saying I get back to you right away. Sometimes I get a lot of emails. As a matter of fact, I just got to doing a show and I'm actually doing the, the class for my car because I'm crunched on time. But I too try to get to emails within a couple of days. If you email me and I don't respond, I encourage you to call me names, abuse me, email me, say, Ryan, I emailed you three days ago, please. Or instead of doing that, call the 888 line and usually one of my loan officers will pick up to uh, answer that, right? Uh, anyways, I'm happy. I do want to help you all and get to you guys as quick as possible because I think this is stuff that you don't necessarily want to memorize, but you should know now that there's something there and sometimes you just got to need a good resource to get that out and figure out what that is. Okay, Maritza, finally, I'm going to shut up. You want to tell them what we're doing with the passwords and all that stuff? 
Yes. So once again, uh, if you do want to gain access to our complimentary software and marketing materials, just please send me your emails through the Q&A. I know a few of you mentioned that the chat box isn't working. So just go ahead and insert it in the Q&A and I'll go ahead and send all that information to you as soon as possible. Uh, once you do that, I will be sending you uh, two logins in your emails today. The first one will be coming from Title Pro 247 to set up your Title Pro account. The next one will be coming from us for our website. All you have to do is click the activation link in the email and set up a password. Once you're on our website, you will see um, the video series that Ryan mentioned, as well as the downloadable marketing materials. And if you do have any questions, um, you can either email Ryan or Robert, or I'll go ahead and enter my email as well. You can go ahead and email me as well with any questions that you might have, and I'll be more than happy to help you. Um, I think that is it for now. Um, again, do, Ryan, do you want to say anything, or do you want me to just go ahead and close it off? Uh, I think I've said more than everybody wants to hear this morning. So. Thank you for coming on. Hang on to my email, that phone number to get a hold of us. We certainly just want to be a great resource for you and uh, get clients taken care of. I want to keep every client in the wheelhouse for you that we possibly can. I think you guys know the value of any client. We can't let them out of our grip. We have to make sure that someone else doesn't end up answering a question or doing something for them that results in them getting business and not you. And with older homeowners, certainly one of the hot topics is a reverse mortgage. Thank you so much for being on here today. You can call me. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Marissa, why don't you just put my cell phone number inside the chat or the Q&A. Uh, that way, if they want to get a hold of me direct, I'm happy to answer and uh, at least try to text you back if I don't pick up. Um, Marissa, let's see. Get my cell phone in number there anyways, or if you want to write it down, it's uh, 714-609-0196. And if it's not in the chat, there, she threw it in the chat. So feel free to call me on my cell. I usually try to pick up all the time, but of course, sometimes I don't. Don't take it personally. I want to hear from you all. Have a great holiday, and I hope to see you on my next class coming up soon. Take care, everybody.